away. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Welcome, everybody, and good morning to you. This is Pastor Leroy Carter, Back to Basics Ministries Online Church, greeting you in the name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. This is a happy day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want to give a shout out to our Facebook Live family. Hey, everybody. Hey, Karen Davis. God bless all of you. Everybody, we bless you and praise God for you. Want to give a shout out to our Go to Meet Me uh, followers. Jen Ryder, Apostle Jen Ryder. God bless you. Praise God. Zizla, God bless you. Andy Mack, God bless you. Linda, bless you. And so many others. Then I want to give a shout out to our uh, followers who watch us via the video. Elijah Wena, Bishop. Hey, Bishop, over there in Kenya. Bless you and all the people. Share this word with the people in Kenya. Hey, Bill Abraham, Bishop Bill Abraham in Tanzania. Share this word with others. Hey, William Subuga in Uganda. Share this word with others. Hey, Memo in Belgium, we give a shout out to people all over the world. We thank God for you. God loves you and we love you too. We just thank God. We just thank God. We just thank God. We have a message for you today and we give God the glory. God's got a message. The Lord has laid on my heart a message that's going to bless you and a lot of other people. And we're going to start a series today, probably a three week series on how to recognize false prophets and teachers, how to recognize false prophets and teachers. So we want you to be alert. We want you to be alert. We want you to be alert. God is impressed on my heart to tell you not to fall for deception. Don't be deceived. Praise God. And so we thank God. We thank God. We thank God. We're going to ask one of our uh, listeners and followers, a member of this ministry. We're going to ask Apostle Jen Ryder from Chesapeake, Maryland. Jen, how about leading us in prayer? Good morning, everybody. God bless you. Father God, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for your presence, Lord. And I just ask that you just help us to acknowledge your presence and your working in all of our lives and our hearts, Lord. Help us to just show love and bring unity to this holiday season, Lord, and not division, Lord. Just prepare our hearts for it and give us your love, Lord, the love that you love the whole world with, Lord. I ask that you just speak through Reverend Carter, Lord, and just give him that special anointing and Bring us, bring us revelation through him, Lord. We give you the honor and we give you the glory and we thank you, Lord. We love you in your holy and precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you, amen. Apostle Jen Ryder. She's spreading the gospel in the Chesapeake, Maryland area, in the D.C. area and wherever God sends her. And we want to encourage you, Jen, to keep on letting the Lord use you. And we give a shout out to your husband, John, and to your family. And we praise God for what he's doing. I thank God for this online church. It's different. It's different. We're reaching out to many people who do not attend the brick and mortar church. We're reaching out to many people who have to work. Some people are listening while they're on their jobs. We're reaching out to caregivers. We're reaching out to the incarcerated. We're reaching out to people who cannot travel, can't even get out of bed. And so God loves you and he wants to bring his word to you. You are precious to God. You are precious to us here at Back to Basics Ministries. And we thank God for you. Well, bless the Lord. We don't stay on for too long. We try to keep our services somewhere around the 45 minute timeline. We thank God for all of you who are listening by way of your smartphones and cell phones. And we thank God for those who are on the Internet and we give God the praise. So gather your family around for the next few minutes, because I have an important message for you from the Lord. 
it's going to bless you. Then we're going to continue with this series on next week and the following week so that you will know how to recognize the false presence, false prophets and the false teachers. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your anointing. We thank you for hearing Jen Ryder's prayer. And Lord God, we ask that you move mightily and bless people today. We ask that you set people free from sin and bondage and sickness and anyone who is ill. Lord, we pray that you will bless them and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, the Bible has much to say, my friends, about false prophets and false teachers. The New Testament statements about false teachers find their origins in the Old Testament teaching about false prophets. So there is a lot of teaching in the Old Testament about false prophets and the New Testament uh, continues. God does not want his people ignorant. He does not want you blindsided. He wants you to know and to be full of wisdom. He wants you to be able to discern who's real and who's not real. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of people out there preaching what they call the gospel. And you need to know who's preaching to you. You need to know whom you're listening to. You need to know if that person is of God or is that person of Satan or is that person of self? You need to discern and God gives you the way to discern. The scripture says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be open unto you. And the Bible teaches us to test the spirit by the spirit. Everybody preaching is not of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody you see on TV is not on is not of the Lord. Everyone you see on the Internet is not of the Lord. Everyone you see on YouTube, even on Facebook, Facebook is not of the Lord. And you need to know because why? Because your soul is at stake. The souls of your family is at stake. And so you need to know, get in the know. We're talking about our eternal destiny and we don't want somebody leading us in the law in, in in the wrong way we need to know i've made up my mind i'm going to heaven and i know you've made up your mind so we don't want anybody interfering or uh disrupting our journey we have fixed our eyes on jesus and so be alert ladies and gentlemen be alert many false prophets have gone out into the world. Satan has loosed a lot of false prophets. He's loosed those demons of deception. And it's our responsibility to know that we know that we know. That is why we need to fellowship with God. I thank God for this online church. I thank God that he's blessing us to reach people all over the world. And people all over the world are getting this message, this warning to be alert and not be deceived. Don't allow yourself to be deceived. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a history of people who've been deceived, who thought they were following men and women of God only to wind up deceived and destroyed. So it behooves us to know who is teaching us and whom we're following. And so we want to encourage you to stay in your Bible, stay in the word, stay in fellowship with God, and even uh, don't let people condemn you if you're not attending church. If you're on this online church, you're in church. Ladies and gentlemen, you might be getting more out of this than you'll get sitting up in the brick and mortar building. It's all about your relationship with God and your hunger for God and your yielding to the Holy Spirit, being obedient to the word of God. So don't be condemned. If you don't meet at a certain building at 11 o'clock Sunday morning or whatever time they meet on a Sunday morning, don't feel guilty when people tease you about coming on the online church. Ladies and gentlemen, this online church is reaching people 
for Jesus. We have other online churches. My friend Paul Begley, he's reaching people for, for Jesus Christ. Tens of thousands of people are following that ministry and many are getting saved. And so we thank God that this is a new paradigm, a new paradigm, a new way of thinking. Why sit up in a dead church hearing dead messages, sitting with dead people when you can come alive and be where the spirit of the Lord is? The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So we thank God for the liberty here and we give God the glory, the honor and the praise. We take no uh accolades we take no glory it's all about jesus it's all about the holy spirit and so we want to talk to you today about how to recognize the false prophets how to recognize the false teachers ladies and gentlemen we see that many teachers and prophets start off as being very serious with the lord Many are anointed, Holy Ghost filled, tongue talking. They lay hands on the sick. They cast out demons. They worship God. They have a serious prayer life. But many cross over to the other side. Many give into greed and money and materialism. Many give into sex and lust. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about watching out for the false prophets. How can you tell uh, if many prophets are false, we will show you how in the next few weeks, uh, including in this message today. So we see many of them begin as true teachers, true prophets, and they use their gifts and their anointing uh, to the glory and honor of God. But there's somewhere in their ministry, listen to this, it's somewhere in their ministry that they turn to serving themselves instead of serving the living God. They are tempted to serve themselves. Some give in to money, some give in to sex, some give in to drugs, some give in to pleasure, some give in to position, some give in to the government, some give in to authorities over them. But ladies and gentlemen, it behooves us to be true to God and, and, and keep this charge, a charge I keep. God has given us a charge to preach the gospel. God has given us a charge to be true to him. And ladies and gentlemen, there are many preachers, prophets, and teachers. They can preach. They can preach. They can preach the paint off a building. They can paint, preach the paint off of your new car. But their lifestyles, their lifestyles, their manners of living negate all of their good preaching. Ladies and gentlemen, I heard of a preacher. Uh, she's a pastor. She preaches well. She preaches holiness in, in church. But then as soon as church is over, she goes next door and opens her whiskey bottle and, and invites church folks to come and drink liquor with her. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a false prophet. There are many people who put on the guise of being godly they put on a show and and many people have been deceived by them so we want you to be able to recognize 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 where the prof false prophets are who they are and stay away from them avoid them at all costs false prophets can lead you to hell and we don't want anybody to go to hell so we thank you. Thank God. We welcome you to the Back to Basics online church where Jesus Christ is Lord and he's moving by his spirit. God is moving by his spirit. So let him bless you today as you yield your spirit to the Holy Ghost, as you hear the word of God and may God bless you. Jesus, uh, gave us criteria for discerning false prophets. In Matthew 7, 15 to 23, here's the word that we hear from our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. He said, we're in Matthew 7, 15 to 23. Jesus said, watch out 
for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. This is Jesus speaking in Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 23. Thus by their fruit, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Jesus says, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them, Jesus says, I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Jesus said he will tell them. They will cry out, but Lord, Lord, did not cast out demons in your name, did not preach, did not lay hands on the sick, did not raise money, did not build buildings for you. And Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. Depart from me. Ladies and gentlemen, that will be a sad day. That will be a sad day for the false prophets, for the false teachers, for the false preachers. And that will be a bad, sad day for anyone who follow them. That is why it is so important that you know, that you know, that you know that you're following a man or a woman of God. And don't make idols out of them, ladies and gentlemen. Put your affections on Jesus. Put your trust in the Lord. And if God assigns you to study under anyone, be truthful and faithful to your assignment. But don't idolize that person. You need to check out that person. You need to do a background check on the person you're following. You need to tr check out that person's lifestyle, ladies and gentlemen because many false prophets have gone out into the world. I say many false prophets have gone out into the world and they are deceiving. They're deceiving the multitudes. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people sitting up in church today, right now, right now, being misled, misguided by false prophets. There are many preachers who do not preach the gospel. They preach their own precepts. They preach the precepts of men. They preach their own agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, you must be aware because your soul salvation, your eternal home depends on what you hear and what you receive and what you live. So Jesus told us to beware of false prophets. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, there are many false prophets. They preach in the anointing. They have the gift, but they've turned the gifts to their own self-aggrandizement, their own self-edification, to their own purposes. Many today are counting numbers. They want to build a large ministry. They want a large following. Ladies and gentlemen, God told me not to count heads. Don't count numbers. Don't worry about how many people are listening. Don't worry about how many people are following, but preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. A amen. So I preach the gospel. I don't worry about how many people are listening. I don't worry about how many likes I get on Facebook. I preach what the Lord says. Ladies and gentlemen, there are men and women. They have greatly, highly anointed ministries, but they're living like sin. Come Monday morning, they're living like sin. They put on a good act for you. They put on a good show for you. They've got people deceived. But Jesus said, beware of false prophets. Test the spirit by the spirit. Test the spirit by the spirit and test them by their lifestyles. Ladies and gentlemen, you see prophets 
living flamboyantly, 18, 19, 20 cars in the garage, uh, a fine wardrobe, uh, multi-million dollar houses. And ladies and gentlemen, they keep asking you for more money, more money. Ladies and gentlemen, be, beware of the false prophets. Many people have gone into the ministry because they know that the ministry is a way to get wealthy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you need to discern. So we're going to spend the next couple of weeks looking at how to discern the false prophets. In the next three weeks, including today, I will give you 40 ways. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you 40 ways to recognize the false prophets, 40 ways in which you can recognize who is false and who is not false. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, number one, let's start with this. True prophets cannot become false prophets. True prophets cannot become false prophets if they keep their eyes on Jesus. But here's the sad thing, the flip side. True prophets can become false prophets. We're surrounded by them in America. We're surrounded by them in Europe and in Asia and in Africa. When I make trips overseas, I see many false prophets. They tr they try to duplicate what we're doing here in America. They try to imitate the American preachers. They try to imitate the churches in America. In Kenya, they have a group called briefcase preachers, briefcase prophets. They don't have churches. They come online, they come on Facebook, they beg you up for money, they ask you to support their ministry. They don't have a ministry, so don't send any money to them. Many are briefcase prophets. Know who's real, know where your money's going, ladies and gentlemen. Know where your clothing is that you're sending to different countries. Know where your money for food is going, because I've seen on the streets of Africa, and in other places, the same stuff we raised up, food, clothing, to give to the poor is being sold on the streets, ladies and gentlemen. And much of it has been solicited by false prophets, not only in Africa, but in Europe, in the United States. There are a lot of phonies in the United States. They're getting your money. They're getting your plans. They want $100 a month. They uh, will offer you their prayer cloth. In other words, they got a piece of material from the material store and they cut it up in the sections and they send it out to you and they call it prayer cloth. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be deceived. Know who's real and know who's uh, doing the will of God. So, so let's start with this. True prophets can become false prophets. Learn how to recognize the true prophets. Let's look at this. True prophets may give false words under controlling leaders. So number one, true, true prophets can become false prophets. And if they change their ministry and they're no longer preaching Christ Jesus and they're building up their own bank account, they're building up their own ministry, they're building up their own program, and they're asking you for uh, to bless their program. They keep asking, they keep asking, they keep asking. They're not giving you anything. They're always begging. They're always giving you their phone number, their cell phone, their email address, uh, their bank uh, address, ladies and gentlemen, but they're not giving out anything. They're not praying for you. They're not, uh, they don't have a hunger <coughs> for your, for your blessings. They don't have a love for Jesus. True prophets. Many started off true, but they turn. Money changed them. Sex changed them. Same sex changed them. Alcohol changed them. Drugs. Prosperity changed them. And they no longer love the Lord, but they go through the pretenses. Don't be deceived, ladies and gentlemen. Then we look at this. True prophets may give false works. False words, I'm sorry. True prophets may give false words 
under controlling leaders. Ladies and gentlemen, there are some preachers, some prophets, some teachers who have become so politically attached. You got them in the Republican Party, you got them in the Democratic Party. They go wherever the wind blows and they attach themselves to leaders, rulers, and they compromise the gospel. We see it all over the nation. It's happening today. It's happening today. Many have lost their calling. They've lost their first estate because they are connecting with the government. They're connecting with who's in power. They're kissing up to the government. Ladies and gentlemen, we saw this when they began the faith, uh, faith-based uh, government help. When the government instituted faith-based help, we saw a lot of preachers cross over. They began kissing the government for money, for finances. They began kissing up. They lost their calling. God wants us to depend on him. I wonder, can I get a witness? God wants us to depend on him. Not a Democrat, not a Republican, not the president, not the Congress, not the local township official, not the county official. Ladies and gentlemen, don't sell your soul to the politicians for favor. And we see many preachers selling their souls and their congregations for favor. We see it all over America. And, and hey, Bishop Elijah, we see it in Kenya. We see it in this recent election. We see people lining up to get favor. Ladies and gentlemen, God is grieved at how easily we shift our allegiance and our loyalty to others. And, and many people are shifting because they are led by false prophets, false teachers presenting fake news. They're not preaching the gospel. They're giving you fake news. It, By the way, on the subject, fake news. Ladies and gentlemen, prophecy is more than telling the news. I mean, if I want the news, I'll, I'll turn on KYW or Fox News. And a lot of people think prophecy today is telling the news, news events. I get people sending me all kinds of news events. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not prophecy. That is journalism. That's telling the news. I love the way my friend Pastor Paul Begley prophesies because he will take a news event and he will relate it to what the scripture says. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not connecting news events with scripture, then why call yourself a prophet? And many people are being deceived by false prophets. So true prophets may give false words under controlling leaders. In other words, they preach what the leaders tell them to preach because they're getting favor. They're getting money from these leaders. They like the position. They like being stroked by leaders. And so whoever's in power, these prophets shift their allegiance and they kiss up to whoever's in power. And the sad thing is congregations are being deceived. I'm thinking of a large, big name church in Texas where uh, prior to the last election, uh, this pastor led his congregation and he denounced one uh, person running for office and he told everybody that person was the Antichrist and that whole congregation, we're talking about thousands of members, began denouncing this person. And then uh, God had to humble this preacher. God, you don't hear his name much anymore. God had to humble that preacher. Ladies and gentlemen, do not follow false prophets. A lot of your preachers getting involved in politics. You need to seek God before you even open your mouths, before you even talk to your congregations about politics. You need to get on God's side and see what God has to say. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been called to preach the gospel, the good news. We're not supposed to divide people. We're not supposed to uh, pick and choose. We're not supposed to put people down. We're supposed to be honest. We're supposed to operate in love. I know I'm talking, I know Tammy Nichols, I know what I'm talking about. I know this is right. You do it too. We, you, we need to be true. Keep on being true, Tammy. Keep on being true, people. 
Here's another way in which you can recognize a false prophet. False prophets are harsh, arrogant, competitive, self-serving. They are harsh. They are arrogant. They're competitive. They're self-serving. They don't care about you. They pretend they love you, but they're self-serving. They're arrogant. And the thing that grieves God about many false prophets is false prophets refuse to repent. And if you're sitting under a, a preacher, a prophet, or a teacher, and that person has done wrong, that person is living openly in sin, and, and I'm, 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 I'm thinking of men who have married men and are pastors, women who have married women and are pastors. I'm thinking about men and women who have drug habits, who have sexual uh, problems, are greedy for money. Their lifestyles do not exemplify Jesus Christ. You need to discern, ladies and gentlemen, and you need to cut them off. You need to cut yourself off from them, ladies and gentlemen. Why sit under a pastor who's a homosexual living openly in homosexuality? Why sit under that pastor? Why sit under a pastor who, who's uh, 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 living in, in sin and, and has openly married another woman and the first lady is a man? Ladies and gentlemen, we've got churches where the first lady is a man. Where the man married another man, so the first lady's a man. Ladies and gentlemen, this should not be. But yet people follow them. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about decision time. You've got to be sure that you're sure that you're sure that you're following a man or woman of God. And whoever you're following, you must make sure that Jesus Christ is first in your life. There should be no idols in our lives. Tear down every idol. Tear down every stronghold. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if I have an idol in my life, how can I worship God? God is not deceived, nor is he mocked. Ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're talking about presenting to people the true gospel, the love of Jesus Christ, no deception. And so we all need to repent if we're not doing right. And God is going to hold preachers accountable. Ladies and gentlemen, he's going to hold preachers accountable. Number four. False prophets and teachers do not repent. They look the other way concerning the sins of God's people. They don't repent. And when their followers are sinning, they turn the other, the other eye, they turn their head the other way. Because when a preacher is living in sin, listen to this. When a preacher is living in sin, how can that preacher teach others when the teacher or the prophet is living in sin. And so what they're doing in a lot of churches, they're glossing over the sins. They're letting people do whatever the people feel like doing. But they're having church. And those churches are being packed every Sunday morning. People are going in sinners. They're coming out sinners. They're not getting saved. They're being deceived. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no anointing there. There's no healing. Much of it showmanship, showmanship, ladies and gentlemen. Here's another way to recognize false prophets or false teachers. And we'll take maybe one more and then we'll close this thing out. False prophets and teachers use flattery. They are deceptive and they live in denial. They use flattery. They're deceptive. And they live in denial. Now, you need to get this. And by the way, uh, this is being recorded, so you can get the recording at www.backtobasicsministry.wordpress.com, or you can email me or call me, and um, 
we could send you this video uh, several hours from now, but you need to review this. And as we continue next week, you'll learn, you have a list, you have 40 ways in which you can recognize false prophets. False prophets and teachers use flattery. And ladies and gentlemen, they know who to stroke, when to stroke that person. I've seen preachers take certain men and use them as slaves in the church. Anything they need done, they have one or two men who will do anything for them. They might hold something over them. They might know of that person's sin. They know, or they use flattery. I've seen preachers uh, take women and flatter them and tell them they're so much, they're all this when they weren't. But the women believe it. And those women are like slaves, putty in their hand forever. Ladies and gentlemen, there are many people in the church who have been flattered, who are made to think more highly than they are because their pastor, their prophet, their teacher stroke them, pump them up. Ladies and gentlemen, this is deceptive. And what the teacher, the prophet or the preacher does is drain that person, use that person. They will use that person until they use them up. They will drain them of all their facilities, their bank account, whatever they have. And ladies and gentlemen, there are people who are slaves to a lot of preachers, a lot of prophets, a lot of teachers. Beware of the false prophets, Jesus said. Here's another way in which we can recognize false prophets. They teach their own thoughts not God's thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, they teach their own thoughts, but not God's thoughts. You've heard preachers say, well, the Bible says such and such and such, but this is what I think. Ladies and gentlemen, throw up the red light, raise the red flag. When the preacher says, the Bible says this, however, or the Bible says this, but Shut him down, shut him down, shut, shut him down. Because after that, but is coming something that will destroy you, something that's negative, something that's against the word of God. We must be true to the word of God. Many preachers listening to this today, many believers, you need to just repent. I've got to repent of some things because God does not want us deceiving anybody. God wants us to be true. Ladies and gentlemen, I tell you, people are getting way away with this. They're getting away with this, but the time is coming when we've all, we all have to give an account to the Lord. We have to give an account to the Lord. I can't wait till I talk to you about that preacher, that old preacher who told a lie to the young preacher. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Part of next week's lesson, there was an old prophet who told a lie to the young prophet and the young prophet lost his salvation because he believed the old prophet. Ladies and gentlemen, that's part of next week's lesson. We're sharing with you ways in which you can recognize false prophets. We've given you a few today, just a few. And we start, we'll start with the one about using flattery. Ladies and gentlemen, flattery can make some people do anything. Flattery will make you do something you never thought you would do. Flattery has broken up marriages. Flattery has broken up households. Flattery has caused children to think more highly than what they are. Flattery has caused children to rebel against their parents. Flattery is deceptive and destructive. And a lot of preachers, in order to hold on to their ministry, hold on, and they want to hold on to their people, they want to hold on to their folk, as they say, my folk, my sheep, my flock. Ain't nothing yours, man. Ain't nothing yours, woman. You don't own anybody. You're just a piece of dust that God filled with his spirit and called you to preach the gospel. Don't get beside yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, so many preachers 
so many prophets and teachers are beside themselves. They look down on others. They think they're so much better than others. Ladies and gentlemen, there are so many preachers, so many prophets, so many teachers who think they are entitled. They're your pastor, so you're entitled to give them your money, your wealth, whatever you have. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. There is no entitlement. Everything we have, everything we will have belongs to God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. As a friend of mine says in Pennsylvania, I'm just the pipe that God blows through. I'm just the pipe that he blows through. Don't get beside yourself. Don't get all puffed up. Don't get like Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put him back together again. He fell. He fell. I'm going to preach about that one of these days. Look out for a message called Humpty Dumpty. And I'm going to tell you who Humpty Dumpty was in scripture and what God did to him. And when you hear that message, ladies, oh, that message brings repentance. The Holy Spirit uses that message to bring, bring repentance. So let's wrap this up and call this how to recognize false prophets and teachers. Part one. We continue next week as we work toward through our list of 40 ways, 40 ways. I gave you about six or seven or eight today, 40 ways to recognize false prophets. Ladies and gentlemen, take this message seriously because your life is at stake. Your eternal life is at stake. Your family's well-being is at stake. Nations are at stake. Nations have been deceived by prophets. Nations have been deceived. We'll talk later about Elijah and his prophecy and Elisha and how nations were deceived because of false prophets. But God wants you to know the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Jesus said in Matthew 715, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ladies and gentlemen, they look good. They talk the talk. They sound religious. They know how to flatter you. They know how to comfort you, how to console you. Many have led silly women laden with lust. Many have destroyed households. Many have destroyed marriages. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody coming to you saying I'm a preacher is not a preacher. Everybody saying I'm a man of God or a woman of God is not of God. Many are of themselves and many are of the devil. It's up to you to discern. You've got to fine tune your prayer life. You've got to stay in the word of God and you've got to know how to talk to God and listen to his voice. I'm so glad that some of you are on who are enrolled in our class communion with God in the Paul Begley School of Prophecy. And you're learning how to hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, know how to hear God's voice so that when the false prophets, the deceivers, the sheep, the wolves in sheep clothing come and they flatter you. And they use persuasive language and they are impressive. Know how to deal with them, ladies and gentlemen. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Jesus said, if anyone will come after me out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Ladies and gentlemen, those living waters should be flowing up out of our innermost being, bubbling up, ladies and gentlemen so that we know the word of God when we hear it. We can discern who's false and who's not false. Beware of deception. Don't allow yourself to be deceived. Praise God. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. I pray that this message has been a blessing to you today. I pray that you'll tune in again with us on next Sunday. I pray that you'll get 
um, the video online in, in a few hours from now. And those of you who are watching this uh, days from this time, this message is designed to bless you, to edify the church, to get you in tune with God's spirit, to preach the gospel. Jesus said, beware of false prophets. Many have been have gone out into the world. They're deceiving people. Satan's purpose is to keep you from going to heaven. He used every trick in the book. He used whatever means necessary to prevent you, even flattery, lust, even preachers. So you've got to guard your soul. You've got to be like Habakkuk. I will stand on my guard post. I will sit myself on the rampart and I will watch and see what the Lord will say to me. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to be like Habakkuk. Get on your guard post. Put on the full armor of God. Get those binoculars out. Spy the land. Be alert. Test every spirit by the spirit because your soul is at stake. We don't want to stand before Jesus and say, but Lord, did I not prophesy in your name? Did, not, did I not cast out demons? Did I not feed the hungry? Did I not give my money for the poor? And Jesus will say, depart from me. I never knew you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is your responsibility and my responsibility to know Jesus Christ. There's no other name under heaven whereby we may be saved. It's the name of Jesus. Jesus died on the cross so that we might have eternal life. Come to Jesus. If you're not saved today, get saved right now. You can be saved right now. If you're listening and you're not saved, you, you just put in the chat window, I want to be saved, and give me your phone number or your address. Or if you're listening, uh, by video, by this tape, uh, you want to be saved, give me a call or send me an email, LeroyCarter69 at Yahoo.com. I will never ask you for your money. I will never ask you for your money. I'll accept it if you send it voluntarily, but I won't ask you for your money. It's not about money, ladies and gentlemen. It's about getting saved and worshiping God and keeping ourselves pure and discerning and watching out, not only for ourselves, but watching for our families, watching for our community, standing on guard, watching for the church to be true to God. If you'd like to give your heart to Jesus, repeat this prayer after me. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is your son, that he died on the cross and was raised from the dead. I invite you, Jesus, to come into my life and be my savior and Lord. And now I am saved according to scripture. Praise God. If you pray that prayer or form of it, you are saved. Then let us know so we can pray for you, help you to find a church where you can grow. Praise God, where, where there's an anointed, Holy Ghost-filled, Holy Ghost-led preacher or prophet who can teach you and help you to grow. Well, bless God. Uh, we're going to sign off from our Facebook Live, and we thank God for the Facebook Live family. Then we're going to sign off on the Go to Meet Me uh, family, but we ask the Go to Meet Me family, if you care to stay on, let's chat. Let's take a few minutes. Tammy Nichols, let's take a few minutes. Uh, Andy Mack, let's take a few minutes and greet one another uh, after we sign off. First, we'll sign off with the Facebook family. Thank you, Facebook family. I love you. I thank God for you. Hallelujah. God bless you. And now we're going to stop recording at the go to meet.